Hi everyone, it's Erin from Wild Birds Unlimited and today I'm going to speak to you about migration. We originally intended for this talk to be given in store and then outside, but it's been so windy that we decided to have a little fireside chat. To me, the best part about the hobby of bird feeding and bird watching is that no special skills are required. One can just sit back and enjoy. Birds are beautiful and amazing creatures that fill our lives with wonder and loveliness. And we always say that conservation is going to start with appreciation. And at Wild Birds Unlimited, our goal is to provide you with great quality products, customer service that is second to none, but also with the opportunity to grow and expand your hobby and be able to appreciate the world around you even more. Today, I want to wow you with some interesting facts about migration, highlight a few fascinating migrating birds, and give you a couple of tips for attracting some migrating birds to your backyard. Migration really is a special time. We get to welcome back our old friends to the yard, um, particularly in the springtime after a long and tough winter. Being able to spot a bird that you haven't seen for a while gets us excited for the changing seasons and can even bring hope to our hearts that better days are on the horizon. But you know, migration is actually a really tough business for birds. The numerous hazards they face include bad weather, predators, exhaustion over water and drowning, collisions with towers and buildings, and starvation due to the loss of suitable habitat along the way. It's estimated that about half of all migrating birds do not survive their combined trips north and south each year. So why do they even bother? They're really are three things that affect that. Um, there's nesting space, food, and day length. If you take a look at a globe, you'll notice that the northern hemisphere has much more land mass than the southern hemisphere does. It contains more space for millions of birds to spread out and establish larger nesting territories that have less competition for food and a better chance of avoiding detection by predators. As birds migrate north, the hours of sunlight per day grow longer and this advantage allows birds nesting in the north to make more feeding trips to their young every day. Um, the young grow faster, they leave the nest earlier and it shortens that dangerous nesting period for both the babies and the parents. Um, just take for example um, a robin that nests in um, St. Alaska can make over 30% more feeding trips to a nestling per day than a robin in the northern United States can. Um, and that, yeah, again, it shortens that dangerous nesting period. So migration can be triggered by combination of changes in day length, higher or lower temperatures, changes in food supplies, and of course, genetic predisposition. So did you know that more than 300 breeding species leave the United States and Canada to spend the winter in Mexico, the West Indies, and Central or South America? Across the planet, 4,000 or more species of birds are regular migrants, and that's about 40% of the total number of birds in the world. Um, it's interesting that most long-distance songbirds, shorebirds, and waterfowl fly at night when it's cooler and the air is calmer. Soaring birds like raptors and vultures, they migrate during the daytime to be able to soar on those thermal air currents created by the sun. Um, and then swallows, swifts, and nighthawks also migrate by day as they feed on the flying insects that are active during the day. You know, when you and I take a long journey, we can reference a map, which of course I love to do. But how do birds know where they are and where to go? In fact, birds, they utilize compass information from the sun and the stars or by sensing the Earth's magnetic field. They also get information from the position of the setting sun and from landmarks that they see during the day. One of, or actually the highest, Flying migratory bird is a bird called the bar-headed goose. This goose regularly reaches altitudes of up to 29,000 feet above sea level while flying over the Himalayas in India. 
The longest migrating bird is an Arctic tern. And this bird can fly more than 80,000 kilometers each year. They rack up more miles than any other migratory bird. They travel between the Arctic, where their breeding sites are located, and the Antarctic, and that's where their summering grounds are. And this is an annual journey that is roughly equivalent to flying twice around the globe. That is more mileage than you put on your old faithful Honda each year. With an average weight of an eighth of an ounce, hummingbirds are the smallest and cutest migrating bird. The migratory path of the ruby-throated hummingbird takes it across the Gulf of Mexico twice a year, and they fly nonstop for up to 24 hours while covering over 1,000 kilometers. While you may not see a bar-headed goose or an arctic tern in your yard, you can attract migrating birds. And whether a bird is just passing through, like the American tree sparrow we spotted in the trees just off our deck a few mornings ago, or whether it decides to set up shop for the season like American robins or American goldfinches or red-winged blackbirds or even something like a Baltimore oriole, one of the best ways to welcome them is to provide an environment that mimics how birds naturally live and forage. So I'll give you some tips. My first tip is to use the natural landscape to your advantage. So a landscape is that is not completely manicured is going to help attract birds. So take a look around your yard. Do you have natural cover? Is there somewhere for birds to hide from weather and predators? Do you have some natural food sources? If possible, allow some plants with seeds to stay in your yard during fall, winter, and spring. Like many birds, like finches and sparrows and juncos, they love to work on those seeds. Put out a few brush piles. It gives birds a place to hide as well as a spot to rest and seek cover before and after eating at your feeders. And leave some standing dead wood or plant a big dead tree called a snag. Woodpeckers love to go to town on these, but other birds climb up and down the tree trunk as well, looking for tiny insects to eat. My second tip is to attend to your bird feeding stations. So take this as an opportunity to be reminded to clean and repair your feeders. A clean bird feeder is really a healthy feeder. You can actually move your bird feeding stations around to prevent that buildup of debris under the feeder and that makes it healthier for ground feeding birds. My third tip is to provide quality foods. So high energy, high fat foods are essential for migrants and help them to replenish their fuel for migration. A high fat food is the most concentrated energy source that a bird can consume. Um, that stored body fat is the primary energy supply that fuels a bird between meals and throughout cold winter nights and throughout migration. So I would recommend any of our blends, a no mess blend, Tree Nutty Plus blend with lots of those high fat nuts. Choice Plus is also um, a good one to try. Um, if you're just looking for a plain seed, we've got some peanuts, Niger is another one, and some flower chips, of course. There's other great foods to offer as well. Um, some suet to put out in your yard attracts more than just woodpeckers. I often see songbirds headed for the suet. Bark butter is great, bark butter bits, and of course, if you're not squeamish, mealworms. But uh, my last tip is to provide a moving water source. So moving water is a magnet for birds. If a bird is passing through and they see or hear moving water, they will almost always check it out. It's a great way to see birds that may not visit a feeder, but will make a pit stop in your yard. A heated bird bath in the winter and a waterfall or mister or drip setup is a great way to entice birds of all species. So while the anticipation builds for the time when the snow is finally melted and leaves are on the trees, migration is already happening. Each day we're seeing different species of birds either moving through to their northerly breeding grounds or they're settling in to nest in our area. 
and I hope you can see the magic of migration happening all around you and even find a way to attract these amazing birds to your yard. Mm -hmm.